the four or five heroes, and they're going to be able to disengage, stun him, and keep following it up. Uh, Mm. I'm kind of worried for the secret lanes again because, you know, I thought the tiny was going to be a four, but right now their side lanes don't look so hot. Yeah. Especially the void lane is going to suffer. Death Prophet's a really nice pick versus uh, the tiny and the Omni and the ET. It's, whenever there's a bunch of strength heroes, DP is one of the heroes you think of like Timbersoft. The Spirit Siphon is going to do more the more HP people have. Tiny, he gets a crazy amount of HP really early in the game. He has a really high strength gain. He goes Echo Saber, you know, he might go BKB. Mm -hmm. The Spirit Siphon is going to heal up the Death Prophet, and he has the AA, so he doesn't have to be worried about getting his healing stopped. The only issue with it is that if this Death Prophet gets chronoed, yeah. he can't be bursted. Exactly. All right. Well, we are headed to a deciding Game 3 in one of the most thrilling series of the event. But first, here's Casey with a coach interview. change of shirts it's actually just completely dried out we'll cast in any conditions KC we're like postmen in that regard but I just want to say Dota is such a wonderful game and what truly makes it great is the people it's the people in this competition the players in the booth the homeless man behind the wall behind me whatever it is that's what makes Dota the best esports in the world let's get hype for game three of Mineski versus team secret oh this is quickly becoming a classic. <laughs> I was, I was I, uh, I'll be honest with you. I didn't go into this series thinking it was going to be a classic. Dude, I didn't either. I'm going to be 100% real with the audience. I thought this was going to be a stomp. I genuinely thought Maneski, I was like, all right, like, what am I going to do with all this time I have? You barely managed to beat Na'Vi. Team Secret barely lost to EG. Transited Property says Team Secret's going to blow yeah, you out of the Yeah, you're going to get worked. But, but that's what makes TI oh it's it's the best it's the best there's nothing else like it this needs i could 100 ti's just keep <laughs> yeah, the ti's every day oh every day Lord. of the year me and my kid are gonna be watching ti one day oh it's gonna be wonderful okay we start off this series as, oh, they just high fived as we implied oh that's cute as as we uh as we implied we we thought secret was gonna beat Vanessa, and we start yes. off that series introing saying hey this is a david versus goliath matchup and no better time for ti for you to be david and slay the giant yes and now after game one should have gone the way of Maneski, now after they do manage to clinch game two is Maneski the goliath is secret the david Dude, all along i will say that Maneski, in this two game series uh that we've seen so far They've been the better team for about 95% of the series. Yes. And the fact that it's 1-1, if you're Mineski and you end up losing this best of three, it, it'll haunt you yeah. forever. It, this would have been one of the greatest what could have been situations. And for Secret, you'll take those wins. Oh, yeah. You will take that game one and you'll say, we got away with it. And maybe this is the wake up call that they need, that they're not invincible, that they can't overlook anybody. Such a big game for both teams. And that's what I love about Dota is all the emotions that go into it. We heard Sunbeam. What do you guys, what's the moon in the booth? Everybody expected to hear, uh, you know. It's good. It's solemn. We're good. We're calm. Uh, we're laughing about it. You know, we're going to get this game three. No, we're angry. Yeah. We're pissed off. We're team secret, god damn it. And we're supposed to be beating Mineski. And we're going to see how that anger translates into the game and how they're able to make their way through this laning phase as we have Moon versus Mid-1 in the mid lane, Death Prophet versus Tiny. Certainly an opportunity for Mid-1 to take his aggression out on the Mineski players with this kind of tempo mid. This is where star performances are born. We can forget the other two games. The fans can forgive your other two performances. 
if you clutch it out in this game number three as this tiny uh i feel like i've just you know i'm beating a dead horse but at this point mid one you have to show up he got out damage dealt by a rubik last game yapsor almost <laughs> carried that game for his team uh -huh. it doesn't matter though you only need one to look good kp is going to be playing the ogre Core Ogre at top lane with Raging Potato, babysitting him on the Shadow Shaman, Nisha Faceless Void. This time, he's going to be the one trying to get all the uh, clutch Chronospheres instead of Nico Baby. And they're running it with an Omni Knight as well, looking to uh, shore up their team fight as much as possible. That's what it really looks like to me. Mineski, meanwhile, fast-paced lineup with plenty of push power. Yeah, and I actually really like Secret's Draft. I think that they have the late game. Uh, they have really strong heroes at yeah. just running at you. I could very easily see them just take a lead and never let it go. Because I feel like when it comes to the 5 on 5 team fights, if they can get the jump on this DP, there's no real save for her. Yeah. That, that is very scary. She does have great frontliners in her two cores of the Wraith King and the Ogre, but if Secret get around those heroes, if they get on top of Moon. And so far in this mid lane, relatively even, but Moon has outplayed mid one. But this could be it, Cap. I can't stress that enough. All it takes is one game. History only remembers the winners. That's true. 14 and six, 12 and four so far. Team Secret are walking away from the landing phase with a pretty good CS lead between two of their cores. The Faceless Void, though, is having a rough one. Four and one right now, really being shut down by this aggro dual lane from Maneski. Yeah, and this is a great situation for the Ogre. Uh, you can trade easily. Secret have two different heroes cap that are meant to just win one-on-one -on -one fights. Yeah. And this is not the case right now, as the Ogre can bully you out, the Shaman can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Elder Titan. You can see that Raging Potato is actually using Puppy's Creeps to farm up the neutrals. And Puppy, he's trying to do something about it. They're gonna man fight a little yeah. bit, but when the last shot, Fable, can it stop the damage? It's not enough. Raging Potato gets the first blood. His life will be traded away very likely here, as he cannot run far enough. KP away thought about throwing out the Fire Blast, but doesn't think it's worth it for the mana, and he would be completely correct. The trade-off, though, is that the Omni Knight at bottom, uh, this hero just seems to win lane after lane. It's so hard to deal with him when you have this low damage support five, yeah. and you have no way to immediately burst him from the get-go. I don't. I think if you can't set the if you can't set the line immediately, this lane just completely goes in Omni Knight's favor at some point. It's also a lot about the Heavenly Grace dispel, right? Like once the enemy team has picked up their five position, Aven has an ability that you can kind of deal with, like the Cold Feet, for example, or this Rape Fire Blast, the, the damage over time that happens. You're gonna be able to purge most of that off, get yourself a heal, and it's like the attacks never even happened. Rage of Potato, five minute bounty runes are about to spawn, that's why Yapsor and Puppy are both here. KP though, pulling some of the creeps with him. He wants to challenge. Rage of Potato's gonna walk back with him. Two versus two over the bounty runes. How's Puppy gonna take this one? He's gonna try and go for the stomp. No, he's gonna take way too much damage for it. No, he's actually gonna go for it and stomp. Misses KP. Tell Nisus isn't there. Mid one's actually gonna be able to grab the bounty rune. As he shows up with the bottle and Zai actually manages to get the other side. So that's going to be three for uh, Team Secret. Mineski were the ones who actually had the better bounty room control the entire time last game. And I think the game prior. And that's going to give them a little bit of a gold lead. Pretty negligible, though, at five minutes. And we've seen what these te two teams look like. It's one of those interesting situations where you never know how somebody's going to match up. Maybe Mineski just matches up really well against Secret. And that's why we have the, the sort of series that we're having right now. Zai, level five already. We've seen the power of this Omni Knight before, and, and this kind of like very aggressive lineup of Mineski, like being repelled by an Omni Knight, just being frustrated, not being able to get that kill that you started off on, that's certainly gonna cause a lot of issues for Mineski. Yeah, it's similar to game number one where Mineski, in fact, had the Omni Knight. Uh, yeah. They just weren't able to bully him out. If you can't do it from the get-go, your odds just decrease so dramatically. But that's where that ancient apparition ice blast has to come in clutch, right? 
Yeah, but you can just get pipe, I feel like, on Omni. Yeah. Isn't that what you would do as on the offlane? Oh, yeah, absolutely. In this kind of game? Yeah, you just get pipe, and all of a sudden, it's the same situation because they have so much magic damage. KP gonna be pulled back, potentially, into his doom here. <laughs> He's so done. damn tanky. Let me tell you, yeah. Bottom lane, instead, that's maybe the offlaner that dies. This time, the cold feet does actually latch. It's die. so funny that you see Omni Knight die, and you watch an ogre just kind of walk it off. Yep. The chain stuns are good enough for Mineski, and with these uh, skeletons pushing in, also just tanking up the tower shots, that's going to lift the siege oh, wagon and do moon. tons of damage. This is moon. the same rotation he made last game, and this is a big rotation for them. And they're going to try and rush a defense here from Sai, but he's going to TP in. Is he going to be in trouble here? They have the grace on him. He's going to slow down a lot of these disables. But they're protecting the catapult, and that's what's important. That's why mid ones also come in for this. Last game, he didn't make this defense. This game, I think they understand how important this tower is. The Siege Wagon dies, and the Tier 1 tower does not fall. Moon could have used Exorcism to finish off that tower when he first showed up, but he, I think thought, he thought the Siege was Wagon was good enough. He thought it was free. And that's secret. They're a veteran team cap. They're making those adjustments. They realize Moon's play. Uh, he was, I think he was anticipating that top push, but because so many teams are doing it, he's just sort of going for the play that uh, Secret doesn't expect. No yeah. one's really assaulted secrets offlane tower before like that especially once you give like uh zai has a good lane but a rotation like that shuts him down if they caught him again that second time when he tp'd under tower. Oh, that ruins this game and they might even go for it here is they may uh, try he to show Moon. up hits him with the nuke looking to be able to slow him down with the spirit siphon zai the Heavenly Grace protecting him a bit right now, but Nico Baby has another round of stuns coming in. The Crypt Swarm's not going to be good enough, and they don't want to die of the tower. Mineski, uh, this is what we're talking about in trying to go for these kills and not quite getting it, not getting the kill. Look at this tempo. The Look at this tempo. Oh, They're wow. going to TP top and just go for it right after. And this is how you alleviate pressure from this bottom lane for Nico Baby. If you can't do it in one lane, do it in another. Can Zai get there in time? He's just about to get back to the base. He's going to have a TP scroll soon. Nisha's going to be stunned up, fire blasted. They do have the Hex. That's going to be enough to be able to get the kill onto Nisha. And this exorcism will be used to Mineski, bring down a tower. They're outpacing them right now. Yeah. This series, they're, uh, they're thinking two steps ahead. And Secret, I mean, their focus is on that bottom lane, but suddenly there's somebody top. And you don't even really want to dive this Wraith King because you know he's got ulti, he's got stick charges. If they could take this tower and defend, this would be such a huge boon for them. Part of the reason was used though by the DP. Yeah. And that's going to be an opportunity, right? Team Secret, they're not going to be as cooldown dependent early game because their mid is a tiny who's always going to be ready to fight. Yeah. And but they want to. They don't want to trade this cap. They do this not. Power is still healthy enough that you can bring heroes in and try to defend it, and, and it would extend your game so hard. But they might have no choice. This might be a little bit too late. And that means that core rotation from KP kind of hurts them, right? Yes, absolutely. Now you've got two cores in the same side of the map. So that's a win for Secret. It's funny how in Dota you can have these little wins and losses without a hero kill actually happening. Just purely due to things like positioning and rotations. 10 minute bounty runes are coming up though, and we're gonna see who out positions the other. We've got Ninja Boogie, he's gonna join them for this fight at bottom, but if he dies right away, mid one knows he's here. He's trying to hide right now, but unfortunately it's gonna be found. The avalanche toss is gonna be quiet enough, but the purification will get the kill. And that means they have to give up in these two bounty runes, which puts pressure on Maneski to make the play top lane. Oh, they're gonna get all four of them, Cap. Good stop, Nisha. He's gonna run to the other side. Four bounties for secret. That's massive. Even though they're leading in kills, uh, three to two. Yeah, they've gotten over 1,500 extra gold off of the bounties on oh, Team Secret's massive. side. That's the difference itself? Yeah. AI Ice Blast gonna come in, try to defend this mid tower. Yeah, Still stealing, stealing Bloodlust. Blood blood blood. Good play with the Siege Wagon hitting the tower. That's a few extra shots. Well, in the hard camp here, the Siege Wagon is up there, and that means it's going to be uh, a little bit delayed in its push forward. I wonder if Maneski are going to try and make a play towards that top lane, or if we're just going to see them uh, continue to farm up. Surely a more passive game is that to the favor of uh, Team Secret, because they have this void. Oh, they're actually going to go for the kill on his side. The Ice Blast is there. Eco Baby holding on to that Wraith Fire Blast. 
Tries to get a crit, whiffs. Zai does manage to duke into the trees. They're gonna spot him one more time now that they have the grace is gone. They do have the cold feet. They're gonna try and chain the stuns here. The purification going out. And oh man, that status resistance just lets him do so much. But it looks like Nico Baby may just hit too hard. He's got a little bit of mana to be able to work with. Zai's trying to duke into the trees right now. Nico Baby gives up. Zai jukes it away and gets out by just the skin of his teeth. And he is indeed going for the pipe. I feel like there's no better item choice for him at this point. I think what both oh, teams yeah. have learned about it is it comes down to the team fights. A lot of the times in these uh, in these matches, we just see one team rolls over another in the laning phase. Mm -hmm. But for these two teams, I mean, they know what the mid, the mid and the late game look like. Raging Potato likely to go down here. There's two cores up here. But in fact, yeah. they actually just retreat for it fully. They don't actually have any aggressive vision on that side of the map, so maybe Secret just feeling like um, because they don't have vision of the Tier 1 tower, the Shrine, they don't know if these TP rotations are coming. We know that Mineski is actually playing a little bit more passive, maybe in part because of the Hand of Midas that they have oh, they might on the Wraith mid one here. but the smoke up with Moon. They can play with that core. They're going to try and slow down Yapsor here, get him chain stunned. That's a kill. Is that a tower, though? Yes, absolutely. Oh, mid one's here. They're going to be able to catch the Ancient Apparition. A pickoff like that could mean more. Ninja Boogie dies, but the Exorcism being used. I'd like them to drop the wards here. They are going to drop the wards. In. They're going to be able to get vision of these who actually teleport in. Can they get chain stunned? They do have the shackles. Where's the follow? The fire blast actually used on the Omni Knight. They just don't have Moon here to get the real damage. A three-man silence. That's going to be a lot. With the rate fire blast onto Tiny. Big one down to half health already. The tower's taking up some damage as well. But Team Secret, they're healthy enough. They're going to go for the Chronosphere. Now into the Death Prophet. Trying to nuke him down with it. He toss up in the air. They're going to be able to finish off Moon. A good stomp comes out from Puppy as well. They're going to focus on KP. He's dead. Ice blast on its way. Nico Baby on his first life is about to fall and all of Secret. Very healthy, certainly healthy enough to bring down Nico Baby a second time. Team Secret hold their mid tower and repel Mineski. And they might even grab it themselves. The wards, the last of them about to fall. Four heroes up here, Zai. You can see that he's just too strong of a force to be reckoned with at this point in the game. He allows Nisha to get in and out of those fights so cleanly. Mineski's land up. In fact, feels a little bit greedy. AA is a support. You're so ulti reliant that you can't really quite get in there. Whereas in the backline, Puppy just kept throwing out stomp after stomp. It's a different beast entirely. Their game is certainly a lot easier in some ways, right? With this mid one tiny making these plays. You saw the way they just, uh, the Zai is forced to be fire blasted there. Otherwise, he would have saved Nisha. The team fight positioning feels really rough right there for yeah. Neski as well. They, it didn't really feel like. They were half committing. If Moon was able to actually follow up that Shadow Shaman play, get the silence onto the Omni Knight, yes. then maybe KP is able to fire blast down Nisha. There's no Chronosphere, and the fight looks a lot different. And they just have so many tanky boys on the side of Secret. They've got four yeah. melee strength heroes, or three, Going and a void. Zai. They do have the rotation coming in from the Shadow Shaman, so if he comes back, Mid but they're spotted denied. by the illusion. Nisha does deny the mid tower. I don't really know what their solution is right now for Zai. Yeah. Feels like this is going to be an uphill battle for Mineski. They just need more farm right now. And speaking of greedy, their ogre is going to go for a hand of Midas. Their Wraith King has a hand of Midas. Uh, their two supports are a little bit greedy. They're going to run into Zai here, who gets trapped for the time being. Phase boots his way through. The last little bit of nukes, but it's not good enough. Zai, the ice blast wears off. Yeah, he's further proving that point for me. Yeah. I mean, he picked up the body route, too, by the way. They use so much to try to grab him, but the status resistance in a game like this feels so value. And look, now, mid one, he's uh, he's got a fully completed Ags right now, Cap. He has... Oof. We're seeing this Aghanim Scepter being picked up faster and faster for these tinies. Can, can you explain some of that? Uh, I just feel like it's a value item for tiny. It makes yeah. you a teamfight beast. It solves a lot of your uh, issues where, you know, oftentimes tiny, he falls off because you have to go into melee wow. range. And if you can't burst people down immediately, you just get kited. Well, yeah. this item makes it so it's really hard to kite. Ice Blast just poking at him. Gets a little vision, sees what Secret's up to. They're gonna stick around for this tier two push. If they're backing up, that means the push at top lane from Mineski. 
should be retreated as well. Yeah, I will say in the previous two games, Maneski had quite a bit of a lead going into this phase of the game. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the game looks like when Secret finally has a post-laning phase lead. There's something I want to talk about, though. This this Wraith King, right? Traditionally, in many, many patches of the past, Wraith King's considered a early to mid-game carry. Yes. And with the Death Prophet, we're looking at, you know, trying to push down towers by 20 minutes, go high ground by 25, 30. A lot has changed for both of these heroes, particularly the Wraith King. We've seen a lot of these Hannah Midas Radiance build. Hector, especially from Infamous, has shown that Wraith King is no slouch late king. You can really push this hero to the limits. Is this just about, what is it about? It's about the Aghanim Scepter, is it about Talon changes? What is it? Uh, I just feel like this hero is good against the other course. You never feel bad about having him frontline for you either. A lot of times in Dota, you saw in the the game that we saw just that just happened when the void goes in and he gets bursted down. You mess up the team fight. Suddenly you've lost. Yeah. In this position, he's so forgiving to play. So it's you about ease of execution. Yes. And at TI, that, there's nothing more important, right? He's so easy to work around. <laughs> he dies once. You don't even feel that bad because it gives your team time to reposition themselves, whereas the enemy still has to clump around. The fact that the Wraith King, you've got to kill him twice. Yeah. It means that there's no mess ups. Well, there's that Aghanim Scepter from mid one, yeah. pummeling KP with trees, and now is going to get the tier two bottom tower. If you build a BKB, you always have time to get the BKB on. Yeah, well, that's true. Aghanim Scepter, usually we've been seeing Echo Saber into Aghanim Scepter here. Mid one's gonna go the other way around. I also think Aghanim is a great farming tool. It's a it's a real low cooldown. And you can just kind of freely use it in fights. Oh, look at this, 20 minutes Push down lanes. 18 minutes. They're just kind of going for it right now. They've dealt a good amount of damage to this tower. Mid one is, we said, give us a star making performance. Bail your team out. So far, so good. Seven out of your eight kills. X, Raging Potato. I think he knows he's been caught and he's just trying to stall things as much as possible so his Serpent Wards can actually get the kill on the tower. But sadly, there's a Glyph. And the Glyph now, especially with the multi-shot, is so good at clearing out the creeps and defending. Yeah, now this is just going to be food instead for Secret as they clear up all but one of those, I think. Radiance more, more for farm. Moon. Uh, Death Prophet's another hero that can go late game uh, a little bit better. The new Aghanim Scepter that was introduced for the hero, that's a core item. The scary part for Mineski is, I don't know at what point in the game they're going to win it. Yeah. I mean, if they're, they're not winning it already, right? Yeah, it feels a little bit scary right now. Ninja Boogie. I don't know if this is like an issue of pace. Yeah. Because oh. I felt like oh. previously they had heroes that could just run at you. And yeah. Moon had some sort of hero that could just collapse on the side lanes. He could set a tempo. But in this game, it sort of feels like he has to be passive with his DP. It feels like they've gone a little bit away from the principles that led them to success in game number one and game number two. And so now it becomes much more about this Wraith King. Like in the previous game where Nisha had to be the main hero, I think Nico Baby, so much rides on his shoulders. 20 minute bounties, mid one free to uh, push out bottom lane with his volley, take control of those. Mineski, are they gonna invade? Are they gonna try and get more than just this one? It seems they're willing to concede all map control, the team secret right now. They just know they're weaker than them. They have to ride the line. They have to rely on their carry. A man that they brought in late into the DPC season, this Radiance. Can Nico Baby change the fate of Maneski right now? The good news for him is that he is good against the cores of Secret, aside from the Omni Knight. Yeah. Of course, he's going to always be able to survive out the Chrono. And more importantly, he doesn't get bursted by the Tiny. Both upsides for his hero. The only downside is that he's going to need help. If it means that he, you know, the Chrono doesn't do anything for him, Nisha's just gonna say, I'm not gonna Chrono you, I'm gonna Chrono move every single time. Yeah. 
and that him. makes Moon's game so hard to play. Is that why he's not, like, he hasn't actually queued up the Aghanim Scepter, which everyone goes after the Yule Scepter. Does he need, like, Aeon? an early Aeon disc? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's feels so feel bad. Terrible. I feel like you go Axe, and then yeah. you can give for the Aeon disc. You, you just have to do it. I'd sort of, like, maybe even get the Shivas first. Before the be Aeon okay. disc? Yeah, I'd yeah. be okay with that, but I do think you need an Aeon at some point. And oh, he goes Blink, Blink instead. Maybe he just wants to fight. They're going to get the Radiance timing, and maybe they just want to run it secret. And that's how they want to come back into this game, rather than yeah. just pure farming. I mean, the AoE Silence can come in really clutch here against this Omni Knight, right? Because you always know the Omni Knight's going to be running forward to protect Midwan, or Plus, to protect Nisha, who's been initiated on. It's very good against the Faceless Void. Yeah. Nisha already has a BKB. That's so scary means this silence is going to be very ineffective against him. It also means that he's always going to get Chrono off. Yeah. Which is pretty disastrous for Mineski. Pretty much the only one who can stop that outcome is Raging Potato. And I just don't see him getting a lasting shackles in these fights. He does have the Ether Lens, though. He feels like he's paper. Yeah. Uh, and I would say that Mineski would be all right, but I think this Omni Knight, I've been saying it from the beginning of the game, it might just prove to be too much gonna walk up the hill but they don't have their death prophet here secret fighting around their shine they've got the numbers advantage the pipe has been it's been used almost immediately and zai i mean he ends any thoughts of aggression. he just doesn't care about you raging potato does manage to get the hex off there so the avalanche the ice blast is coming in they do manage to get the guardian angel that will help protect mid one here comes the absorbs but it doesn't actually nail a whole lot that's gonna be the ogre going down nico baby still trying to focus on mid one because they have in the grace one is actually going to be fine here now we have the exit to mount yeah sure does manage to force staff down to the low ground moon pursuing trying to get another spirit type and this time on mid one can he actually take down this tiny well they've already lost most of their support chronosphere catching them just on the side mid one tries to get away of the tree ball and now the death is dead nico baby comes back with his second life slowed down and this is going to be the second team fight now he's here to and die it's team secret absolutely outclass Mineski and almost wiped them. And Zai's still chasing. He wants the full team wipe. They're going to extend their lead 7k. Uh, the Blink Dagger, I feel like, just doesn't really do anything for you. Yeah. It helps you evade some situations, but... And what they want to do is get on top, and I would agree if the Void didn't have such a fast BKB, and if you weren't playing against Heavenly Grace. You fulfill those two conditions, maybe you're all right. But as it stands, I mean, they're trying to do what they did last game, which is take these mid-game fights, push in for the towers, but you know, they don't have the firepower. They don't have the heroes. Yeah. You see that? Team fight again. They thought they just had the burst damage, but a fast Guardian Angel coming out from Zai was so key. It slows down the damage that Nico Baby was putting on a mid one, and then... He just doesn't get enough. The Ice Blast wears out about right now. Yeah, if mid one dies in that position, maybe the Void doesn't have enough damage because he yeah. only has a Maelstrom. I mean, the Absor just barely died there. He almost got the Tiny as well, but Nisha being able to get that uh, Chronosphere, he held it for so long too. He read that the fight was going to go their way without it. He only used it once mid one really, or excuse me, Moon really committed to that fight. There's now a Mjolnir for Nisha. Mineski. There's his damage twice now they've been repelled by team secret at some point in time you're gonna have to start thinking about an exit plan a plan b what are you gonna do with this game threatening to go late yeah plus i feel like uh in the previous two games mineski had the vision advantage every single time yeah. they dewarded so many different wards in this game that top ward saw them coming the entire time, so they knew to be set up for the fight. Small mistake is secret did not end up denying that top tower, which only had 20 HP. And this is going to secure them two bounty runes. I mean, they haven't gotten two bounty runes in such a long time. Moon's going to go for uh, the plate mail and the axe, both items that I advocated for. I wanted to see the axe first into the Shivas, but he opts to go for the plate mail. Yeah. Just a little bit of help. I mean, it is a lot of physical damage. Yeah, I like the <laughs> casual play mail. Yeah, with the volley built coming out from mid one, like he actually has to worry about the physical damage coming from the tiny, not from the faceless void. Because <laughs> void's got a very magic damage heavy build. Neil there and his, his bashes, that's most of his damage right now. Very true, Cap. 
5 to 14, a 7,000 net worth lead for Team Secret. We have not seen them have this kind of lead once in this series. It's only until this game three, they get mad and they are just not letting Mineski get any openings here. One thing though is throughout the season when uh, Secret has any sort of lead, they just sort of go for it. They yeah. take fights nonstop, uh -huh. but I think they've sort of developed like this mutual respect. Secret is saying like, Mineski, you're a good team. You can hang to with us. Uh, let's not just throw. Yeah. The Raging Potato jumping forward. They're going to try and blow up Yapsor. That is a target. You can certainly burst down. That's like mid one. Target. Mid one? He's hard. But Yapsor, <laughs> that's easy. And he's got a BKB mid one. I love when your core still go BKB when you've got an Omni Knight. I feel like it's the worst thing in the world when you purely rely on your Omni to. Uh, to save you in those situations. It yeah. makes it so hard because then he has like four different heroes he has to constantly save. Every BKB that comes out makes Zai's life easier. You're one of the biggest BKB enthusiasts that I know. You always say you have a lead, secure it with a BKB. Yeah. What's the point of having 10k net worth if you don't have a BKB? Yeah. You get hexed once, your 10k net worth, it's gone. You just die. Just like that. Though, how much, how much gold was Yapsor worth? I remember saying this was a 7,000 net worth lead. Now it's only 5k. He was worth a lot. <laughs> Their A is worth 2,800, and uh, Ninja Boogie's like most expensive item is his Quelling Blade. <laughs> Life's been hard for him. <laughs> that that's his luxury item right now. Raging Potato's done a good job of keeping pace with uh, with Yapsor. In fact, we're pretty much core for core until it comes to the difference between our Death Prophet and uh, mid one's tiny. Yeah, mid one still unblemished, five, zero, and six. I mean, he's no how, how do you push into that? Uh, you don't. <laughs> yeah. you, uh, if I'm straight up honest, you don't. Mineski. It seems to be their turn to sit oh, back. Nice. Ah! We still got it. The crowd like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, an attack, a projectile like Death Prophets, it's not fast. It does that little swirly animation as it makes its way We're through the target AP. He's going to be slowed down. Fire Blast onto the Void, trying to slow down the damage. There goes the Heaven of the Grace. Danger Boogie's already dead from mid one. He managed to get the initiation onto him at the same time they were going on KP. So that's two dead already. But mid one, they're actually going to go for this one, threatening the Chronosphere. Mew does manage to get outside of it. The Guardian Angel will protect him against this exorcism and the lockdown on Nico Baby. They're going to try and focus on Moon while they have Nico Baby just naturally die out. The Circle Wards are there. The BKB, they Almost finished off Moon, the volley almost does it, but Death Prophet managed to survive off the Yule Scepter, and so instead, they're going for the Wraith King, who's had half health. They're trying to play around these wards as best as possible. Blink's healing, going out of Yaptor, Spirit Siphon, healing up. He managed to actually heal through all of that one, but Nisha's has now locked him down. A ton of damage on Anisha, quickly stopped by Zai, who gets out the Purification. KP, who came back into this fight, may just exit it just as quickly as Silence goes out. On the four from Moon, they go back into this one. Yeah, ice ice blast. Blast, and they finish him off. He's dead, but the follow-up there comes out from the volley to be able to finish up Nico, baby. Moon, blast down Puppy. They want Jump the team forward. Point. They're going to be able to get the Omni Knight. That's going to be a life. This time, secret. They challenge Mineski. They say, we think we're stronger than you. Let's put it to the test. But the buybacks, that's what makes the difference. Mineski use three different buybacks, but it wins them the fight, and it just might win them Roche. Can they Roche? If they could Roche, this would make it worth it. If they can't, then all you really did was make it so that the fight went even. And they're gonna ping in a Roshan, they know it's up. I mean, it's not very quick though without the Wraith King. And Moon doesn't have Ags. True, but Secret's not buying back right now. I think they also agree. They're like, we don't think you can do Roshan either. Oh, it's gonna be close. They almost have the Aghanim Scepter on Moon too. That certainly would have helped. Solar Crest is pulling in its weight here. Yeah, this Rosh took forever, but uh, Puppy, does he have a TP? No, he's not going to TP. Yeah, they're and just giving it, it up. a while, but this is a big Roshan. Yeah. Now the gold lead's set to 4K. Moon can comfortably buy Ags uh, without having to worry about having buyback or not. The Ags also means the Aegis is more effective on Death Prophet than it was in the past. In the past, you weren't a good Aegis hero because you were just an exorcism bot. That's all you were. 
But now Aghanim Scepter adds a lot of damage to this Death Prophet when she does have her ultimate on cooldown. That was such a go for it maneuver, by the way. Yeah. Uh, if it goes poorly, Mineski lose the game right there. Yep. When they all bought back. And I thought it was going to go disastrously for them when they ran in one by one. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's looking a little bit Dude, dicey. Moon TPing in and getting the four man silence. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, Moon. That's silence. a cool silence, but what are you going to do with it? Runs after the tiny, but isn't able to find anything. I think he was just trying to get him out of that area. Because uh, mid one, of course, still has the BKB. And they still have to be cautious on the side of Mineski. Yeah. Uh, they used a lot of buybacks for that. In fact, they have only one up and it's on Ninja Boogie. And that's because his net worth is so low that as long as the timer is enough, he'll have it. AC completed by Nisha. They immediately go for the smoke. They might run into the Wraith King here. They've got to be careful. They're going to dodge the Wraith King. They're going to go for anybody else. If they can actually intercept Mineski here, in which they the go. Oh! Anisha. Raging Potato blinks away. They're still going to be able to catch Ninja Boogie. Volley will be able to get it. They don't have to use the Chronosphere here. Two-man silence, but immediately, that's going to be cleansed off by Zai. Jump into the air. Yule Scepter. They want to get out. The numbers disadvantage, I think, is a little bit too rough for them. Yeah. I mean, without the Ancient Apparition, like, how do you deal with this Omni Knight? I, I just don't think you can. Yes, and that's why, I, you know, you live by the 5A, you die by the 5A. That's he's so true. easy to kill, but he's so important for the rest of your team. Ninja Boogie, he came in big time for them in Game 1 with his Witch Doctor. He's going to need better positioning. Yeah, they really don't want to give up three. his tower. They do not, but they just might have to here. Five seconds up for the Ancient Apparition. You just cannot get multiple hero chronoed, which is easier said than done. Nisha's Oops. got the advantage in positioning, but they're going to back out. They're actually going to go for it here. Yule Scepter catching the Omni Knight. Follow up silence, Ray Five Blast, and a Hex, both being used. Four staff after four staff. And the volley from the high ground. This is going to split their fight in half, plus the ET spirit. They wanted to threaten for that. It looked like a good timing for them. But secret. They position themselves very well, and they've got a DD on their faceless void. This is going to force them into a fight, regardless of whether or not Moon has the Aegis. With the double damage and the Ice Blast used. Oh, they're going to use the Old Scepter, dispelling off that double damage. And the Ice Blast about to come back up, but first, Nisha and Mid One try and find their opening. But Raging Potato again with the Fast Blink Dagger away. Now, Secret have overextended themselves. They're going to try and catch the Absorb Puppy. Managing to stop it. It's Mid One who's going to get caught. Extra instead. systems to use. the Ice Blast. Purification goes out. BKB and the Guardian Angel. Five by damage. They can't bring down Mid One anymore. Puppy throws out the Earth Splitter with the Chronosphere as well. It's not going to be able to hit. Can they bring down Moon? It's going to be a close call, but he does fall. Now they're going to turn back into Nico Baby. Never mind. Raging Potato is a better target. But because of the Aegis, they need to be able to get out, but he's been caught in the shackles. Raging Potato, they, they have their heavenly grace. They're going to be able to save these. The silence. A little bit more the silence. No, it's good enough. The Force yes. gets away. The Force staffs again come in clutch for Team Secret. Mid one inside the pit. He's ready to go back in, but he has to blink out. Raging Potato jumps forward. KP, he's going to be able to get the initiation on mid one side. He's trying to make his way to be able to bail off mid one. The guy's blast cooks him, though. They bring down mid one. He's dead. They look for more. Sai and Yapsor. Running him down. Hex on one. Ray Fire Blast quite soon on the other. If they can actually get him, double Solar Crest as well. That means that damage from Nico Baby. He's about to bring down the Omni Knight of Zai. Hey, he's still going. Where? Where? Oh, he has oh, Stop it! And they're right in front of the base right now. That gold lead has been completely evaporated. Mineski have, in fact, wrested it away from Secret. They will not roll over. What is happening right now, Moon? Silence the mid one so we can't actually get the volley off. I can't believe they're going for this tier three without the extras and the buyback goes in their retreat. And that's two core buybacks that you forced out. They weren't able to get any kills. This was a defensive buyback. Mineski, they're actually up 1k on secret. The fights last so long and it got so split. You saw secret, they were on the low ground. It felt like they were going to be just fine. They were four staffing each other one by one, and then they overstayed their welcome. Yeah. If they all just started retreating at that point, they would have been fine. Yeah. But what they did was they looked for the fight after. Because of the exorcism used, they think Chronosphere on Moon, we can go ahead, burst him down. Second life, he won't have the exorcism, but Mineski still proved to be too strong. And now the win probability is in their favor as well as the net worth. I I can't even believe this game. It feels like a departure from our previous two, but 
What a fun one is. I, I mean, it feels like these te these two teams just bring out the best in each other. Oh, They're yeah. They're willing to fight nonstop. The team fights are what determine it all. You get into these crazy five on five situations that seem to last forever. This AC. Dude, these Wraith Kings, man. Once they have the Midas and Radiance, items just start flowing in everywhere. And he's actually going to go for Nullifier next. Yeah, and both teams have all their ultis up. Secret. They're looking for the angle right now. Nisha been heavily graced. He's trying to set. They want to make sure if he does get stunned, that Stannis resistance will let him get off his BKB. And Moon nearly has the Aeon disc. He's sending the courier back. This would be a massive pickup for him. If they can't just burst him through the Chronosphere, you see how tanky he can potentially be. And his uh, his ability to come back into the fight after the Yule Scepter is so good. Crystalis up, mid one. That's a lot of damage now. The Echo Saber, that provides the Disable to slow down to keep them in the volley, but it's really the Daedalus, or in this case, the Chrysalis buildup, that's going to deliver that sort of game-ending Chronosphere into volley combo. Secret have to be so careful, Cap. Dude, they, they use the 2-4-5-X. Really if either of those heroes die at this point... Oh, look at this. A sneaky little play. Rage and Potato trying to finish up that Tier 3. Not good enough, though. Very nearly does. Uh, and this Roshan fight cap is going to mean everything to both sides. If Secret decide to take the fight, it'll be without the buyback They're on the go Tiny. For They're going to go for it Or here. the Omni Knight cap. It'll be two core buybacks that they don't have. Team Secret. Will it be Hubris? Will they get caught in this mid lane? A lot of them are behind the Absor, but not everybody. First defensive force now. You could see Mineski not going to take the bait here. They're being patient right now. They don't want to overextend themselves. They've also, they just picked up the Aeon Disc, but the Death Prophet just showed himself on that ward. Secret should know about that saving grace. Yeah, that's a big item pickup for both teams. Now you can't just blindly Chrono Moon and hope for the best. You have to position it correctly. So we wait with bated breath. Roshan about to spawn, and that's going to mean a mad dash for both teams. And neither of them have buybacks, but it's oh, Nesky that's limited potato, by They actually had a ward in place. They're going to be able to see that Blink Dagger in. Raging Potato, defensive force, staff away, but a volley, finish them off. Raging Potato down, BKB used by mid one, and Mineski. Everybody out. Roshan, 20 seconds oh. until he's up. What team's going to go for it? A fast Roshan like this with 90 seconds for Raging a Potato. Ice Frog just go wants for it. it. He, oh, yeah. uh, just 10 more years of Mineski versus Secret. What gives the most dramatic situation? It's that 20 second timer on the Roche. And if they get it, there are going to be so many items coming in for Team Secret. Like the Lotus Orb for Zai, that's going to be crucial because the whole Blink Dagger Death Prophet play is then canceled. And there's a Nullifier on Wraith King. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be an explosive team fight. Dude, he's going for the Orchid. He's going for the Son of Doom. The Son shout, of out, Doom. shout out to Odie, Odie Pixel, Pixel for that one. I hope you're watching. And but all, all, of that, all of that, over. right? All of that can go away off of a Lotus Orb or Heavenly Grace coming out from that Omni Knight. They have to hunt Zai down. This really is a game about hunting Zai. I will say his build, not going for Greaves, has hurt him so much because oh, yeah. he doesn't have the ability to remove that silence easily. Oh, now they're going for it. Cap, they they're care. going for it. Ice Blast in the pit. Moon Mineski showing himself in quickly. bottom lane. Dude, is Mineski actually going to fight around this? This is going to go really Moon's quick. Being in. Can they get in there in time? Nico Bait gets vision off the new neutral. They're trying to go for Nisha. He's already popped his BKB. Chronosphere to be able to pick up the Aegis and Cheese. He's got that. Now he's going to be able to jump over to the side, trying to go for Moon as best as possible. Now time locked out. Spider ready for the first cast. light. It might be the Aegis as well. Look at Midwan. He's TPing back to the shrine right now. He's trying to stay in the fight. Zai's so gone. Get out of the river, but Zai's gone. He doesn't have buyback. And Nico Baby, he's blinked forward if he can get any more. But 104 seconds now for Zai. Two minutes on his buyback. They've got the numbers advantage. Aegis and cheese, but for what? No Omni Knight, no Chronosphere. And a DD rune. Oh. How fortuitous for Mineski. Ice Frog intervenes once again. He said, look, I gave Nisha a double damage rune. He if didn't get take to use it. You're going to have the same opportunity. And what can they do with it? They don't have the Exorcism, but they do have the Serpent Wards. They're right in front of your base secret. You don't have Chronosphere. 
Ward's out. Trying to stall right now. That's all Secret is looking to do. They have Aegis, but it feels so useless when you don't have Chronosphere. Yeah, what can a boy do without his ultimate? And that's gonna be Rax. That is definitely gonna be Rax. Can Mineski do more? Or are they going for the tier two They're mid? Gonna... Yeah. No, just calm down. Yeah. Gather yourself. Are you telling are you talking to me or Mineski right now? Both? But I'm, I'm about no to lose water. my mind where this game <laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> Mineski. Two Siege Wagons, a bunch of the boys, and a tier two falls. Let's see some shrines. They are gonna get so much gold because of that fight. Yeah. They're gonna grab the shrine here. Uh, this shrine, once you've taken, once Roshan's out of the equation, the other shrine doesn't matter as much. Yeah. This shrine controls the triangle. It makes it really hard for you to get outside your base and farm. And it just forces Secret to sort of hole up. 25% backtrack. Oh. He's so in for it. Oh, he's gone for it. All right. Let's do it. Let's see what it does. What if you backtrack a crit? It's I'm the in. same situation here Show with the me. Wraith King. Maybe he just oh, feels like the man. buff. All right, you know why? I think it's because he thinks that his Chronosphere isn't very good against the Wraith King or yeah. the Death Prophet at this point. Yeah. I think he's made the executive decision. Uh, I can't deal with these two heroes. The better talent to dealing with these two heroes uh, is the backtrack talent. Yeah. And Zai needs the Soul Absorb. He's been waiting for it for so long, but the problem is his buyback's about to come back up, but he won't have the gold for it. So he's put into this weird position where he can't team fight without an ability to get rid of the silence, which is why I feel like he needed Greaves in this game yeah. so badly. Yeah. It's, of course, in hindsight, yeah. you want to get phase boots for the laning phase, but it feels so rough to fight without it. I mean, is Zion going to have a buyback? I think you might buy out the Lotus Orb. Maybe if you think you're invincible anyway. I mean, he's definitely is. He's waiting around that area yeah. for a reason. I, uh, think, I, I think there's that's the only way to solve some of the team fight issues. Oh Jesus, that's a lot of gold. That's a that's a hand of mine. This multicast frog, and he's got the 40 strength. The 40 strength. Boy's hey, a beast. To attack in a third hero that Chronosphere is just not going to do shit against. KP right now is walking around with 3,600 HP, one billion armor. I I think that's what that adds up to. I can't believe we're in this position right now. We're secret. 8K down. Cap, they were most people's favorites. Mineski, bottom two. Yeah. They're about to join Infamous potentially in the top eight. Liquid. Liquid Dota, where are you at? You had these two teams as your bottom two. <laughs> and look at that. But the team fight is all that matters. Yaps are pushing They're forward. Telekinesis on a KP. The first initiation of the Shivas. Chronosphere, it only catches the back line. He didn't actually lock down Moon. He will be able to finish off Rage of Potato, who doesn't have half buyback. KP is almost dead, but look at that. Trapped inside the trees. The Guardian Angel barely goes offside. He's being hunted right nice now. Nice Nice blast takes him out. Nisha looking to be able to finish off KP, but he's so tanky. The Ogre's good. Mid one, pummeling them with the volley. Trying one to finish to win this off. Fight. Oh, baby, as best as possible, but Moon, he's getting good access to some damage at Fateball to be able to finish off the Ogre. He does have buyback mid one. He also dies as well. Moon's able to chase him down into the high ground. Nisha man fighting against an Ninja Boogie. He gets one. Can he get two? He gets three, but no. He's gonna die here. He does have the Aegis on his second life though. Nico Baby and KP sit on top of him. They need to be able to chase him down. Ray Fire Blast one. Fire Blast two. Ice Blast in for Staff. That's not gonna hit. The tree volley over the top. They're gonna be able to turn. Second for the blink on Nico, baby. And he, he gets away. The it. avalanche doesn't hit him. Now it's KP's turn. And this is KP's buyback. They have the silence, though. By the, the counter, you and your scepter being countered by the Lotus Orb. Shiva's out. Three versus four. Nico, baby. There's second. Oh, the no fire. Trying to finish off the faceless void. But again, the four staff is going to be good enough. Pop. Who's in the middle of everything? Nisha has a BKB, though. They running out of physical damage. Nico, baby, is trying to go for mid one instead. But Moon, he's being checked out. Second away from the Yules. Nico, baby, he'll be able to at least get puppy, but the rest of Secret, they're not tanky enough. They can't actually go for the second life of the Wraith King. But one second, and Zai is about to be alive. Secret in a great position now. No buyback for 106 seconds. 74 seconds on the deck for the Ogre. They've got to make something of this. What a turnaround for them as they barely hold in that fight. If that Death Prophet gets Yules off, they're going to win that fight and she was one second away from it. The target fire precision on secret.
1k gold lead now for Mineski. Oh my heart. Oh, they're baby. trying to execute the paces for it. They know they are at a disadvantage. But again, the four stats. Oh, it's coming. He's got it. And you've got a stall secret because once again they're going for your throw. Telekinesis pullback, mid one, toss him over to Nisha. Nisha. And he's just trying to waste time right now in secret. And they're obliging right now. They're walking away from the tower. They don't have glyph though. And this is gonna be a hard hold. There's no buybacks. He's gonna have to do this. 1v5. They did it before. Two versus five. Ten seconds off for KP. No fire. On to puppy. Looking to try and execute the captain of team secret, but they can't finish him off. He's still trying to go for a secret. He's ignoring he's just him. dancing around. Nico baby does have the reincarnation, so he's man fighting here. He even wants to die. He needs the AoE raid fire blast. That's why secret aren't finishing him off. The guardian angel. Good for the throw. It's exposed. Tier four down. Nico baby is trying to finish up anybody he can. But Nisha swinging away. They don't do that. Secret, they went for the win when mid one went for the buyback to help out the rest of his team. That could have been the